Okay, guys, I'm going to go through the uh, the guided practice and independent practice for Pearson 12.6. Uh, you'll see that your assignment looks a little bit different because we did this one as a Google drawing rather than uh, than on the sheet, but it should look similar enough um, because all the same images and everything are there. So, uh, Okay, so what we're doing here is a little bit different than what we've been doing, but I think you can use some of what you've learned so far to get to this point. Now, what we're looking at here is we're obviously looking at uh, at things that are that are different scale, and what I mean by that is that Margie's banner she's only done point zero point four of the banner. She's only painted zero point four of the banner, right? Now Helena she's got zero point five, which means that's a greater number, but it looks smaller here, and it only looks smaller because we're looking at something that is is just drawn slightly differently right so the goal here is that for the first one that we're going to complete the drawings for each banner so for helena's because we know 0.5 is also one half that means that the one hole mark must be right here and you can see that just based on looking at it right so the rest of her banner is going to come all the way out over here now your drawings probably look a little better than mine but there you go so her banner comes all the way out over to that one right well, point four tells us that we're, and you see that they're giving us a little hint here because there's a dash right there as well. We can draw another one in here, but we may also need to draw others as well, right? Because if this is point four, then it's going to be there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten down here. This is the one. So that means that if we're going to fill in the rest, so this is going to be point five right here right so that's the actual half mark but for hers if you wanted to fill in the rest you're going to go all the way down to the end just like that okay there's my lovely art okay so this is what i mean when i say scale and what they're talking about when we talk about structure you're looking at don't get fooled by the size or even how long they've drawn this out just because the textbook drew out our, our number line all the way over here and made it look like this was the same size, Helena's banner is not the same size. It doesn't take up the entire thing. Her hole, the whole amount here, is just this size right here, whereas Margie's is the entire thing, right? they are two holes. They're just different sizes. Okay, so... Now, for this one, they want you to explain, which means they want you to write. They want you to talk about how you determined where to draw the hole for each banner. Now, for me, I looked at it and I said, well, 0.5 is half, so that means that Helena's got half of her banner painted blue already, right? So I knew that that meant that whatever was left was going to be another half, another 0.5. For Margie, is 0.4 is, is less than 0.5, so I knew that she actually needed to paint more. She had more left of her banner to paint. That's how I determined it. So what you write in that section is going to be up to you, but you may say something similar. You may talk about the distance between 0 to 0.5 or 0 to 0.4 and talk about how you did that. Uh, I don't need a whole lot there. Just, uh, just a simple explanation. Now, here is another one where they want you to explain do the drawing show that 0.4 is less than 0.5 now the drawings don't show that right so you know that your answer is going to be no based on the drawings right not the actual numbers but the drawings so the drawings do not show that 0.4 is less than 0.5 and they want you to explain that now what i would say here is no the the size of the drawings does not reflect, and again, you don't have to write the same thing, the numbers. And what I mean by that is that it's the numbers that told us that 0.5 is greater than 0.4, not the drawings. So don't get fooled by the drawings. And I'm going to write that right here. Don't get fooled by the drawings. Don't get fooled by the size. Okay. Look at the numbers. That's what's going to tell you how to get through this. Okay. So let's 
Let's go down to the independent practice section and see what we have going on here. Caitlin is making a map for a one mile scavenger hunt. She wants the stops to be 0.5 miles, right? 0.3 miles and 0.85 miles from the start. Well, we know the start and the end. So that tells us that this is going to be zero. This is going to be one. 0.5, that's the easiest one, right? That's right in the middle, 0 0.5, the halfway mark. Now, 0.85, that's going to be somewhere toward this direction. Now, for the uh, for the assignment that I put up for you guys, we used the same question, but I gave you some dots to move and some numbers to move to the line. So you'll see that. Uh, and those also reflect these here, too. So let's look at this really quickly. If that's 0.5, and this is 1, and we're, we're talking about from essentially 0 to 1, or if you looked at it uh, as 10 to 0 to... Uh, to 10, right? The point, the uh, one is going to be like a, a, a 10. So let's look at this. So we've got five here. We have zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. So that means one, two, three point three is going to be somewhere about here. There's your point five. And then six, seven, eight, nine. And then there's the 10, the one, right? So if we, if this is six six seven eight, but it's point eight five, that means it's actually going to be right in between that eight and the nine, right? That's going to be point eight five. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now they want us to label point two five point five point seven five on the number line as a scale reference. Explain how you decided where to mark the number line. Well. Remember what I mentioned about scale, right? So 0 0.5 is halfway between the start and the end. 0.25 is halfway between the start and 0.5. And 0.75 is halfway between 0.5 and the end. So that's what I would write there. I'm not going to write out the whole thing because you all have seen what my handwriting looks like. But that's what I want you to explain here. Just in words, explain how you did this. 0.25. Now, if we've got one here and a two here, and there's three, 0.25 is going to be somewhere right in the middle, right? 0.25 between the two and the three. But that is also exactly halfway between the zero and 0.5. So I would say that. Now for 0.5, you know that's already right there. 0.5 is halfway through. 0 0.5 means half. So I would explain that as well. Now for 0.75, if you look at this, so 0 0.75, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 0 0.75, these are going to be really common uh, types of decimals that you'll see, especially when you're talking about a number line or scale, right? So if you look at this, 6, 7, it's going to be right in between 7 and 8 is going to be the 0 0.75, 0 0.75 right there, which is also halfway between 0 0.5 and the end. This is exactly halfway between 0 0.5 and and the end. Just like 0.25 is halfway between the start and 0.5. Okay? So that's what I would I would explain right here. Just make a quick little little note about that and that's what I would write into that section there. Estimate where where 0.3 and 0.85 are located compared to the other points. Mark the points 0.3 and 0.85. Explain how you estimate it. Now, we already marked it 0.85 right here. We also marked 0.3 right here, right? Now, when they're talking about estimating, they also want us to explain how you estimate it. So your answers here are going to vary, but I might say 0.3 is greater than 0.25, 0 0.25. So it's a little to the right of 0 0.25. 0 0.85 is greater than 0 0.75, so it's a little farther to the right of 0 0.75. Now you can see that right here, right? However you want to explain that is, is completely up to you, but that's how I would say it. We're looking for those sort of halfway marks, right? That's how we estimated where they would be. Okay, so some of this one is going to look a little bit different to you because I did not have you do this entire sheet. This is the uh, the back side of the um, or the next page, page 660 of your independent practice, and I only had you go through part of it. 
um, just to kind of get an idea of, uh, of what you understood here. So they're giving us, remember I always tell you to look for what they're giving us. They're giving us a good amount of information right here in this box. So you're going to need all of this. You've got three months right here worth of savings. Okay. So it says Tomas deposits money in his savings account every month. If he continues to save $3.50 each month, how much money will he have at the end of six months? How about the end of 12 months? Use the table and exercises six through 11 help. Now, I believe I only did six through eight for you guys, so don't worry about the rest of that. Now, when you look for and use structure, you're breaking a problem into simpler parts, right? So let's look at the quantities. What quantities are given in the problem and what do the numbers mean? So remember, we're looking for quantities and they want to know what the numbers mean. So the quantities here, they're giving us, well, they're giving us 350, right? 350 is the amount equals amount. This is the amount uh, that Tomas saves each month. So 350 is the amount Tomas saves each month. Okay. I would write that down. Now, what about some of these other numbers here? 10. Okay. The $10, that seems pretty important. $10. What's the $10 there? Well, $10 is the amount of money he started with. So that's the money he started with. Okay. Now you can look at, we could talk about the other ones as well. You can write down each one of these if you'd like, or you can say, okay, and at the end of one, two, and three months, that's what the rest of the table shows. Okay. You can write it down just like that. But these are definitely two important numbers that you want to start with and don't want to forget. So he's doing, he's saving $3.50 each month. Okay. And he already had 10. Now, this is where he is at the third month, so keep that in mind. Now, for this one, what do you need to find? What do you need to find to solve these the, the, the this problem here? They're actually asking you for two separate things, right? They want to know what he'll have at the end of six months and what he'll have at the end of 12 months, okay? So what do you need to find? Well, that's exactly what you need to find, right? How much... Tomas has at the end of six months and at the end of 12 months. That's what they want us to, to find here. How much does Tomas have at the end of six months and at the end of 12 months? Now, we only have up to three months here, right? So we need to figure out if he's saving, again, how much is he saving? $3 and 50 cents a month. Okay. And we are now, we're looking to the future. We're seeing what he has next. Okay. What is the re relationship between the amount of money Tomas will have in his savings account in the fourth month and the amount in the third month? Well, it could be, what you write here might vary, but what I would say is that he's going to have $3.50 more saved in the fourth month than he had in the third month. That's probably the simplest way to say this. He will have $3.50 more in the fourth month than he had in the third month. Now, if you want, you could go further. You can actually come up with and, and you know, put a little box on your, your page because I didn't have you go as far and tell me what, what will he have at the end of six months and 12 months. So don't get fooled by these questions because they're asking you a lot of for a lot of explanation. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you what uh, what he will have, right? Okay, so there's four, five, six. Let's look at the fourth month. So if he has twenty dollars and fifty cents in the third month, and we're adding three dollars and fifty cents to that, what will he have now? Let's carry that one for twenty four dollars. So now we know this one is $24, okay? Now what about at the fifth month? Well, we're just going to keep going. Plus $3.50, zero, five, 
picture, put that decimal. Always carry your decimal points down. Carry them to the same location, okay? Seven and twenty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Now he's got twenty-seven dollars and fifty cents at five months. Well, we're gonna keep going, right? Three dollars and fifty cents again. Zero. Once again, carry that. Now you've got eight. You've got 11, carry your one again, and $31. So now he has $31 at six months. So you can continue going in that direction. I mean, that's how you find that one. But what about 12 months? Let's look at this in an, in an easier way, right? So now we know he's got $31 at, uh, at six months. Well, what's an easy way for us to figure out what he has in 12 months? So... Well, certainly one thing we can do is we could look at what he had at six months, which was 31. We could add three, uh, we could add three dollars and fifty cents to it six more times because six plus six is 12. Or we could do something a little bit different. And that's what I'm going to recommend that we do. So let's move over here to the left side here and let's say three dollars and fifty cents times six. We're going to do it times six. Well, here's one way to do that. And this is what I want you guys to remember. We're going to do 6.00 because six is the same as 6.00. And this is going to make it a little easier for us to work, right? So zero times zero is zero. Zero times five is zero. Three times zero is zero. Okay, drop zero down. Zero again. Five times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. Okay, drop two zeros down this time. Zero times Six, right? Zero times six is still zero, but five times six, what's five times six, guys? We'll give you a second to think about that. And then remember that it is 30. Okay, now we're going to bring that back up and three times six. So three times six is 18. You got 21. Now we're going to drop everything down, and we're going to figure out where to drop down those decimal points, right? Because remember I said you got to keep those, drop them down. Well, is 6 times $3.50 going to be $210? No, it's not. But it is going to be $21. Okay, and you can you can figure that out based on what three times six would be without looking at the 50 cents, right? This is estimating. So that would be 18. 18 is pretty close to, to 21. So you're going to guess that there's no way it could be 210. You know where you're going to end up putting that decimal here, right? So, but now you've got $21 and you know, that's what he made over the next six months. He made $21, but you still need to add it to the $31 that he had at the six month mark, right? So that gives us 52 so now he has $52 at 12 months. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, I didn't make you go that far, but you can certainly do it if you want. Uh, don't get fooled by some of these. They're just asking you for a lot of explanation. And uh, just like on the other sheet, don't get fooled by any pictures or anything like that either. Okay, and I'll go over the next sheet in the next video.